Guys, Mr. Bowman here. 1.2 Algebra MCAT is what we're focusing on. And the one of the more recent exams, we're focusing on all the merit ones from 2020. Let's get straight into it. Question number 22 from the website. Um, we've been asked to solve this inequality. Looks really, really messy. But just a reminder, your usual solving methods apply here. So let's get into this three. And then we've got x minus 2, we're then going to minus 2, 3x plus 1, greater than or equal to 14, 1 minus x. So heaps of brackets, let's just expand everything, see what happens. Um, I've got 6 minus 3x when I expand this, then I've got minus 6 minus 2, minus 6 minus 2, greater than or equal to 14 minus 14x. Let's simplify what we can. So 6 minus 2 is 4. So we're going to have 4 minus 9x greater than or equal to 14 minus 14x. I'm now going to group all my x's together. So I'm going to focus on the smallest amount, which is the negative 14. I can get rid of that by going plus 14x plus 14x. So that will be 4 plus, oh gosh, 4 plus 5x, isn't it? greater than or equal to 14. I'm now going to go minus 4, minus 4. 5x greater than or equal to 10. Divide by 5, divide by 5. x would be greater than or equal to 2. So um, question looks nasty, but once you follow your process, you expand your brackets, you rearrange like you normally would. We're just left with a variable on both sides questions. You probably would have done some of these in year 9 and year 10. The only issue is that inequality sign um, we just run it down, you'll see that, I just run it down my equation, just like I would with an equal sign. Now on to question number 23. Um, Kitty has drawn three shapes below, they've told us about the sides, so there we go, we've got two rectangles and a triangle. Um, they've been nice to give us a formula here as well. Find the total value of the area given that x is equal to 6 and x plus y plus z is equal to 12. So my first step here is I need to come up with an equation representing the total area. So the area is going to be equal to the triangle plus, we'll call that rectangle 1 plus rectangle 2. So the triangle is going to be x times 2x over 2. The first rectangle is going to be base times height, which is xy, and the second rectangle would be same thing base times height, which would be xz. So let's simplify. That's going to be 2x squared over 2 plus xy plus xz, which means that's going to be x squared plus xy plus xz. So this here looks really, really messy. Um, and I guess the first thing to note is I could substitute 6 in at this stage, but I'm not going to do that yet just because I think I can simplify things a bit more. I can see an x everywhere. So what I might do is I might factorize out, factorize out that x. So that there will be x, x plus y plus z. And I really, really like this step now that I've seen it. But x is equal to 6, which would be this here. And then x plus y plus z is equal to 12. So I'm going to substitute them both in. That's going to be 6 times 12, which will be 72 centimeters squared. Pretty nasty merit question. Um, if you didn't get that factorizing step there, I don't think that question was going to be done particularly well. To question number 24, a picture frame um, using four rectangular pieces of wood is shown in the diagram. So these are here, uh, that rectangular wood, and there's my picture Kind of sitting in the middle find the area of the picture in terms of x and give your answer in that form there so what that's saying is that's saying the expanded form so we're going to need to expand our answer so it probably means we're going to have some double brackets we then expand it so just generically i'm probably going to start the area is going to be equal to the base times the height so i now need to think what's the base of this picture here and what I can see is I can see this here is 7x minus 3, but I've got this much extra. But this, this much extra relates to 
z or relates to x. So what I'm going to do is the base of the shape, it's going to be the 7x plus 3, which is down the very bottom, and I'm going to take away the x from the top there. Take away x. I now need to do the same for the height. And again, I've got a similar thing. The height over there is 5x plus 2, but I've got the extra x kind of sitting down this side. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I've got 5x plus 2, and I'm going to take away the x from that. That there will give me the base times height of the picture, and I'm now going to simplify those brackets. So I'm going to get 6x plus 3, and that will be 5, oh no, 4x minus or plus 2. So I've got my expression, and this is where it links back to that expanded thing I mentioned before. Just going to expand that there. So that there is 24x squared plus 12x plus another 12x plus 6. And that there gets me to um, 24x squared plus 24x plus 6. Now on to question number 25. I've got a rectangular piece of paper, um, and then those letters there refer to the corners of the bit of paper. And line FH, we can see that corner's been folded over. Um, we know the following information, so that's all there. Um, the area of the triangle has been given to us, which is nice. Find the perimeter in terms of X. So what this is trying to say is we're looking for perimeter equals something to do with x that's kind of our end goal and the perimeter kind of like the rectangular the, the garden question from the previous exam when you've got a shape kind of chopped out you can just kind of pop it back so this length here is going to be the same as this length here and this length here is the same as this length here so ultimately when all of that happens we're just dealing with the rectangle we can ignore that corner being folded so the perimeter of a rectangle is going to be two lots of the base plus two lots of the length. The base in our case is up the top there, 2x minus 5. So that will be 2 bracket 2x minus 5. And the length, I've got x plus 3 over there, and it'll be two lots of those. Two lots of x plus 3. I'm now going to expand. That's going to get me to 4x minus 10. So I did that times that, and then that times that. I'm now going to do the same over here, plus 2x plus 6. That gets me to put the x's together, which is 6x. And then I've got the numbers left over here. So that's going to be minus 4. We are now on to question number 26. Um, Terry is 5 years old, and Marie is 4 years older than Terry. How many years will it take for Terry's age and Marie's age to multiply to get to 77? So what this is trying to say is Terry's age times Marie's age is equal to 77. But we need to figure out how many years that happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Terry's current age of 5 plus x times, so that would be Terry's age in that amount of time, times Marie's age, which is 5. I'm oh, sorry, Terry's age, which is 5, plus the 4 extra years, which is older, plus the x. The number of years passed until they multiply to 77. I'm now going to simplify my brackets. So that there is going to be x plus 5, x plus 9. That there is equal to 77. That's going to get us to x squared plus 14x plus 45 equals 77. I'll then do minus 77, minus 77. x squared plus 14x. Um, that there is going to be minus 32 is equal to 0. And I'm liking this. Um, to solve a quadratic, it has to be equal to 0. I now just need to factorize the rest over here. Um, and it looks like what multiplies the negative 32 adds to 14. I'm thinking it's going to be positive 16 to negative 2. So that means it'll be x plus 16, x minus 2 equals 0. Run out of worm. I should have cleared question 25, but that's all right. Which means my two answers, x1 is going to be equal to negative 16, x2 is going to be equal to positive 2. Um, just noting, 
someone can't be negative 16 years old or it can't go back in time like that. So what that means is in two years, their ages will multiply to that. So what I do is I just write false answer over here. So in two years, the ages will multiply to 77. There we go. So that wraps up that question. 27, I've used a fancy pen because it is the last merit question that we're going to look at for 1.2 algebra. I've got a quadratic fraction. I've been asked to simplify it. So let's jot it down. 4x squared minus 25 over 2x squared minus x minus 10. This quadratic fraction definitely a lot harder than the ones of the previous videos. I can tell the top one is going to be a difference between two squares. Um, but the bottom one's going to be annoying because I'm going to have to use the grouping method. And I'm going to do that on the side. Um, so we'll factorize the top. Um, I'm going to use the square root approach to find the two parts. So the square root of 4x squared is 2x. So that will be 2x, 2x. And then the square root of 5 or 25 is going to be 5. So there's plus 5, there's minus 5. That's going to be over. And I need to factorize this part here now. Um, so 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. What multiplies to negative 20 adds to negative 1. That's going to be negative 5 and positive 4. So that means my 1 will be 2x squared minus 5x plus 4x minus 10. Let's factorize the groups now. They only have an x in common, 2x minus 5. These only have a 2 in common, x Oh gosh, 2x minus 5. Same bracket coming up twice. So it would be 2x minus 5. And then x plus 2. So I'm going to put that on the denominator. 2x minus 5. x plus 2. I like this because I got a common bracket. So they're gone. And that will be 2x plus 5 over x plus 2. So that wraps up all the merit questions from the 2015 to 2020 exams. Hopefully you found them useful. Um, if you're feeling really, really confident, why don't you have a look at the excellence focus area and try to push into those E's.